Thanks for joining us on EMN5. Today we're going to talk about EKG interpretation. So you're going to look at the rate and rhythm, the axis, the intervals, and then for signs of ischemia. So first off, let's review the waveform itself. So what's this wave here in green? So this would be the P wave. In orange, we have the Q wave. Then we have in red, the R wave. Purple is the S wave. And lastly, we have the T wave in blue. Now what does each part represent? The P wave is the atrial depolarization or activation. The QRS complex represents the ventricle part, so that's really important to differentiate. And then lastly, the T wave is the repolarization or recovery of the ventricle. So let's start off with rate. Each small box is 0.04 seconds, which means a big box, which is five by five of the small boxes, is 0.2 seconds, which means it takes five large boxes to equal one second. Now, if you really love math, you can get out your calculator every time you look at an EKG, count up the number of small boxes between each QRS complex, and that'll give you a beats per minute or your heart rate. Or you can use this nifty method of just identifying the large boxes between each QRS complex. So let's say our waves were actually only one box apart. That would be a rate of 300, so that's pretty fast. What if they're two boxes apart? That would be 150. Three boxes is 100, 75, 60, and so on. So let's practice with this EKG right here. So we have 300, 150, 100. Okay, it's somewhere between 175. Let's estimate that that's 85, and there you go, we're done. And so normal would be between 60 and 100, with bradycardic being less than 60 and tachycardic greater than 100. Okay, next up we're gonna look at our rhythm, and there's two things I want you to look at on the rhythm. First, ask yourself, is the spacing between the beats regular or irregular? And this will help you to later determine some differentials, which can be quite extensive, um, but for now, just concentrate on, is this a regular or irregular rhythm? Next off, ask yourself, is there a P wave before every QRS and a QRS after every P wave? If the answer is yes, that means that this is a sinus rhythm, meaning originating from the SA node. If the answer is no, that means it's originating from somewhere else, whether that's the ventricle or a junctional rhythm. And here again, that's helping us determine a differential. So what if you have trouble actually finding the P wave? My suggestion would be try looking in V1 because the P waves here have this biphasic quality to them and can be a lot easier to find. All right, next we're gonna look at the axis. And here we're referring to the QRS axis, which if you remember is the ventricular depolarization, and specifically the average direction of the ventricular depolarization. And on our EKG, we're looking for positive waves, meaning upward, and for negative waves, meaning uh, downward. We're gonna be looking at these two leads in order to determine the axis, lead one and lead AVF. So we're gonna look at each of those waves and then we're gonna plot it on the circle over here. So let's do our first line here. If we have a positive wave in one and a positive in AVF, so positive in one, positive in AVF, that means we're gonna have a normal axis. Well, that's easy, right? Just look at those two leads. Now let's do the complete opposite. So down here, say we have negative one and negative in AVF, that's gonna be extreme right axis deviation. That's very abnormal. So this is our one kind of trickier example. If you have a positive in one and a negative in AVF, now you're in this right upper quadrant, which can be either left axis deviation or normal. So this is the one time you're gonna look at a third lead, which is lead two. If you have positive in two, that's normal. If you have a negative in two, that's a left axis deviation. Next, we're gonna look at the intervals, and there's three intervals to look at. First off is gonna be our QRS complex, and what's normal here? So normal would be less than 120. What if you have a greater than 120? What would be on our differential? So that would indicate maybe a left or right bundle branch block. Okay, next interval is the PR interval. So what would be normal here? That's the beginning of the P to the beginning of the Q wave. Normal would be 120 to 200. If it's less than 120, that might indicate pre-excitation or WPW. If it's greater than 200, that might mean an AV block. So that's something we look for very frequently on EKGs. Lastly, we have the QT interval. Normal would be less than 470. Greater means that it basically predisposes that person to a VTAC or VFib. All these should be printed out on your standard EKG, so just make sure and look at the numbers to see if these are normal or abnormal. Lastly, we're gonna look for signs of ischemia. This is always important for the ER physicians. So there's three things to look at, the ST segment, the T waves, and pathologic Q waves. ST segments, you're looking for either elevation or depression in contiguous leads. T waves, we're looking for signs of new T wave inversion or maybe biphasic T waves. 
And lastly, for Q waves, this is a pathologic Q wave, meaning that it's very wide and deep. Okay, so let's go through this all really quick. So we have for our rate, we're going to be calculating over big boxes, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, and determining if that's bradycardic, normal, or tachycardic. For rhythm, we're asking ourselves, is the spacing regular or irregular? And then is there a P wave before every QRS to determine if this is a sinus wave or not? Next, we're looking at our axis. Make sure and look for leads 1 and AVF. If they're both positive, this is a normal axis. For intervals, look on the EKG for the numbers calculated for QRS, PR, and QT intervals and see if they're normal. And lastly, we're looking for our three signs of ischemia. Here's some references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.